I was like, I'm a nurse, so that's truly why I was even, st- I was planning to stop, because I was like, you know, there's nobody going to answer the scene, so I was like, well, I'll just, I told, had already told my husband, I said, baby, there's an accident, we're going to stop, we'd gotten around 30 feet from the actual incident itself, and we see the, the guy actually get out of his vehicle, he starts running towards us, and all of a sudden, Jonathan and I were like, oh, well, and why is he running from the scene? Well, then he pulls a gun out of his pants and actually starts shooting blindly across the entire intersection area. So my husband turns around, we call 911, and on our way back, because you know the dispatcher's like, well, there's a lot of stuff we need to know. So my husband's like, Leanne, we can, we're at least in our vehicle, so turn around and head back towards the scene. Well, when we get there, the taxi driver is actually standing on the outside of his vehicle, in his, look, with his door open, and has the guy at gunpoint, and he's holding him at the door. There is somebody in Zach Suiza at that time holding the door closed, and so I don't know what went on inside the store, but he held him for a solid five minutes before the police actually got there. So, I mean, he's kind of a hero. And I mean, I didn't see that mentioned whenever they actually released the initial story, and maybe because he, they couldn't have mentioned it, so. So the, t- the taxi cab guy is the one that got a hold of him and held him until the police came. Yes, and so, and what I've, what I heard from the actual scene is that the taxi driver was already following him, which is why he started shooting at the taxi driver. The taxi driver was close to everybody else. And then the taxi driver followed him over into Zaxby's and held him at gunpoint until the police got there. So, uh, so you saw all of this unfold? I saw all of this unfold. My husband and I were actually in a minivan heading back home to actually watch our church service. And I, we didn't even get to the area to where we could actually stop at the red light yet. So he had actually run across the intersection towards us whenever before he started shooting. And so I literally did a U-turn in the middle of it. And thank God the other side was completely blocked off because it was open. There was no, I mean, it was easy for us to actually escape, but it was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life in Bossier. I mean, you just don't think 11, it's 11, 10 and on a Sunday and you drive up and somebody's shooting outside your vehicle. It's hard to imagine that that happens on any day of the week. And that's but, a busy intersection. Yes. And what's bizarre though, it was not busy that day. True, that there, most of the majority of the vehicles were behind the accident and stuck but there were probably 10 people outside their vehicles checking on the lady that was in the car when he started shooting there were kids outside the gas station to the right that jumped behind a dumpster so it was truly bizarre you know you, something like watching a movie that you would never want to be in the film <laughs> you know, like i'd like to watch it on tv not actually be there so let's circle all the way back okay so you and your husband driving down Yes, we're driving down Benton Road. We come over the overpass and we see the actual accident. And so, you know, I we're just thinking it's a normal fender bender. And because the little car is actually crushed pretty bad, Jonathan and I are like, well, there may be somebody actually hurt in that vehicle. And because no AMS was there, I was going to get closer. I was literally going to drive right up to the vehicle because that's what you do when you're a nurse. You, If you're the first person there, you're going to stop and help. And before we even got to them, he had already gotten out of his car and started running towards oh, us okay so then he's like running he starts running towards us and then probably about 30 feet from our vehicle he pulls a gun out of his pants and actually starts aiming wildly at the other side of the intersection and shooting there was no like he had no plan he had no true target my husband said that he actually witnessed him shooting more directly at the taxi cab driver but with me just being the driver, I mean, it, it, was, it looked more wild than anything. We saw four shots before we actually got fully turned around. I don't know how many shots he actually fired. And so you called 911? My husband called 911 immediately and got on with dispatch and was trying to give them information. And when dispatch showed up, they initially went to the actual accident versus going to Zaxby's. And my husband was actually on the phone with them saying, hey, it's not at the intersection. They're at the intersection and it's actually across the street at Zaxby where the taxi cab driver is that the gentleman is. The, once the police got there, everything went smoothly. You know, they got him on the ground and they got him arrested. There was no like, he didn't try to fight or anything. He truly just went straight to the ground as soon as the police were there. And before that, he just had his hands in the air at the corner. So, I mean, he knew, he knew there was nowhere he could go. And then an older gentleman walked out of Zaxby's and that's who, who I assume was actually holding the door um, right after the police got there. Wow. Yeah. And so did you talk to that taxi cab driver? No, I did not get to talk to him. I wish I could, because I would have told him thank you for being the civilian that just truly tried to make a difference. And he didn't, had, to my knowledge, he did not fire any shots. He literally just held the man. There were no shots fired from him. So it was just the gentleman that was actually in the accident that fired shots. And how long did you witness him holding that guy? Um, 
besides the shots, we're literally the four shots that we witnessed and I, my vehicle was turned around. We were trying to stop people coming over the overpass with our vehicle so that they wouldn't come into the scene, but um, I only saw those four shots. And so it was probably not even a full 60 seconds of interaction before we tried to get to leave the scene. And that had to be scary. It was terrifying. It was terrifying. You know, I'm blessed that my children weren't in the car that day. They are with me 99% of the time and my mother had them. So I'm even more blessed that they did not have to witness that. And no one got hurt. No so. one got hurt. Thank God every single one of those rogue bullets hits, hit a missed target, you know. And because not because there wasn't civilians. There were plenty of people. There were plenty of things that they could have hit. And he hit nobody. So I do believe that God was there actually protecting everyone. And I'm actually glad for the gentleman himself that he didn't strike somebody. Because, you know, that would have made his life even 10,000 times worse. So it's a blessing for him and blessing for everyone at the scene. How long did the cab driver hold him at gunpoint, you think? Solid five minutes. He had him at least solid five minutes. But we sat and were waiting there. So when we came back around, we waited at the gas station. So we were still talking to dispatcher because we were waiting for them to get on the scene. Um, the fire truck showed up first and then the police officer showed up. So they were, I mean, they were fast considering the fact that that was from initial phone call to coming through. Because all my husband and I did was literally go up, take a U-turn and come back because dispatch needed to know where he went. And we were like, well, we, we really aren't sure. You know, I mean, <laughs> we turned around and got out of gunfire in our vehicle. And um, my husband felt safe enough for us to actually turn around and go and check for him. So. Right. So, so just clarification, he was on, he was on Benton Road headed north. Okay, that's no, headed, were, were headed. I north. was headed, I was headed towards here. North, south, east, west. North. north. I was headed north and he was actually headed up the overpass and was chased into the Zaxi parking lot. By the and the taxi cab driver actually was in his vehicle. So he was moving even faster than we were to get over to the guy. He was on foot by then. No, the guy was on foot. The gentleman that was actually firing the gun was on foot. The taxi cab, or actually, taxi cab driver actually drove in his vehicle over there. So did you see the wreck happen or no? You no, I pulled up directly after it happened. There was still smoke coming off his vehicle. So he hadn't gotten out of his car yet. And when he got out of his car, he took off at a run. You could tell he was scattered and he was anxious. But when he was running, you know, and he, of course, is wearing the cap and gray shirt. He was running at us and initially he was facing us and then he started facing away. When he was shooting, he wasn't look, really looking at anything. It was more off as if he was facing to the side and he was just shooting with his arm back behind him. So he could have hit anybody. Could have hit anybody, could have hit anything. So I'm just so grateful. I don't know how the little older lady is. I mean, my husband wouldn't let me back out of the vehicle to go check on her by the time EMS had gotten there. I hope she was okay. So it's, it was a mess. So. Let me get some two shots of y'all sitting here. Wow. That, it sounds like to snap any pictures with the phone. No, and if we had been in my, my husband's truck, he would have had dash cam. Of course, I do not have dash cam because I'm a mother and I'm like, well, nothing exciting happens. <laughs> so I was truly like, just strip, taking a normal stroll in my car. Don's like, we'll always be in the truck now. Anywho, that's man view. So it's like, this sounds like a movie. Yes, it sounded like a movie. It was a movie. Like I truly felt like it was almost a surreal out of body experience because you never think that you're actually gonna be running from something like that. You know, like I never thought that there would be somebody within me in the front of your vehicle with a gun. You know, I could not have imagined that happening. So. Once he got in front of your vehicle, you guys kind of, that's when you guys circled oh, around. When he started Once shooting, he, when he started shooting, I literally turned my van at probably 70 miles per hour with my foot on the pedal because my husband's like, move, shots are being fired. And I'm like, I know shots are being fired. You know, I'm doing my very best to get out of there. But he, you know, he was calm in the fact that he knew that he needed to call 911 and get them on the scene. I was so rattled, I could barely drive my car. So, I mean, he truly, everything worked out. And like I said, Bozier, PD and it did show up pretty darn quickly. But I, if it wasn't for the taxi cab driver, we probably would not have had the actual fella. So. And spell your first and last name for me. L-E-A-N-E -E is Leanne and Boudreaux, B-O-U-D-R-E-A-U-X. Alrighty, thank All right. you. All right, thank you very thank much, ma'am. Thank you.